thanks for coming. My name is Ben Pius. Uh, I'm uh, uh, head for a product manager at uh, Teledyne Marine. Um, and today we're looking at this thing here, the T20 on a Gavia AUV, right? And we're quite excited about that because this is the first time that we have such a small multi-beam on a really small AUV, right? The Gavia AUV is, is a so-called low logistics AUV. Um, and, and that has been a challenge in the past to put a small uh, multi-beam on a vehicle like that. Um, so that's what we're talking about today. Uh, it's a product that we are expecting to release by Q3 of this year. Um, so let's first look at the T20. T20 is a quite a familiar multi-beam in the market. Um, it's a compact, wet end, quite a small wet end. Receiver is about 25 centimeters wide. Uh, there it is. And uh, operates between 204 and kilohertz, so it's really used for shallow water, uh, shallow water work or, or ROV work, you know, low altitude work. Uh, gives you up to 1024 beams, 170 degree swath. So, um, you know, you can cover large areas um, from really shallow water to as far as about uh, 200 meters, 400 meters. Um, some interesting features with regards to the, the, the spacing options of the beams. Um, we've got normalized backscatter. Anybody who's familiar with normalized backscatter, it's, a, it's, a, it's an option that we, we offer uh, that, will, that will correct your backscatter values in real time. Right, so uh, you're corrected for any changes to the settings, there's like power and gain settings, absorption spreading, those are the settings that you normally change during your survey in real time. You can now correct for that, so uh, you can safely uh, run a survey, change as much as you want, your mosaic will look, um, will look as, as you would expect, it will reflect the backscatter of the scene. Quite a few automated controls that are really useful for, for operating um, a system in a autonomous fashion, um, I'll touch on that as well, and overall giving you know, really good data quality, and, and that's kind of the, the important thing at the end of the day, people want to collect uh, the data set with uh, no noise and uh, not having to kill lots of dots at the end or do any infills or, or resurveys. That's our, that's our T20 then. And then we've had it at different on different platforms when we first launched it. We had the, the PSP, so that's a, a IP rated uh, processor, and it's ideal for like small open boats where you're exposed to the to the elements, right? We have it in a rack mounted version that comes with an integrated uh, POSM V, um, and uh, and then we have the subsea version, right, with a titanium uh, subsea bottle. Right? So different uh, different options, different ways of, of, of using it. Small open boats, dual head. Uh, autonomous vehicles, and you know, we even had somebody putting it on a on a seaplane. That was quite interesting. So uh, the next thing is, of course, uh, yeah, can we can we put it on a on an uh, on an AUV? Right. So here's um, an overview of the AUVs, uh, the Gavia AUVs. So the, the, the smallest one, the one we'll be talking about today, is the uh, the Gavia AUV, a thousand meters rated. Uh, and uh, the so-called low logistics AUV is easy to launch and recover. You don't need uh, lots of uh, infrastructure in your vessel or, or, or uh, any hardware for that to do that. You could do that. Just uh, one or two people can, can launch that. And uh, the larger one, the Osprey, also a thousand meters. Um, and then, yeah, the, the biggest one, the Sea Raptor, is a depth rate of six thousand meters. Much bigger, bigger vehicle, more endurance, more uh, more payload as well, larger larger sensors. So yeah, I was just talking about you know, the, the low logistics and the easy uh, ways of, of launching and recovering the AUV. I think this this, image, uh, this this video here gives you gives you an idea of that, right? So you know, you don't need big A-frames or you don't need um, um, any support vessels or such, it's, it's, it's quite easy to do this. You can imagine you could do this from a beach as well, or any, any small craft. Right, so there she goes in the water. Disconnected, and then it's all mission planned before. So um, at this stage, you know, the missions will start to kick in. And then from a multi-beam perspective, you would also have those things planned as well. And then it can start to mission and collect the data. The data gets stored on 
stays stored on the on the vehicle, of course, so when it comes up, we can, we can download that. Right, so a couple uh, specs about the, uh, the the Gavia AUV. Right, it's a it's it is a small AUV, uh, just a diameter of, of uh, 200 millimeters, or really really small di diameter. Um, but it comes with uh, several payloads. So uh, navigation wise, the IX Blue C3 or C5 INS, uh, Teledyne uh, RDI DVLs, um, and DGPS of course, and and, and use VL uh, different different options. Um, then, on the mapping front, um, typically uh, these vehicles would come with a, a side scan sonar or an interferometric bathy sonar. And of course, you know, the fitting it, it is quite convenient. The side scan sonar, you have these long transducers, right? They fit easily on the on the body of the vehicle. Um, and then in the past, we've also had these equipped with a, a gap filler. Like a Teledyne Blue View MB2250, you see an example of that here. So, um, obviously, you know, the, the disadvantage of, of systems like these, like a, like a side scan, is of course you have that nadir gap, right? Um, but when it comes to like bathymetry, I think it's generally accepted that the bathymetry from the interferometric system is inferior compared to an actual beam for multi beam. Um, so that's why this is the, that's the first time we're doing now, which is for, where we have an actual multi beam. Um, and we're putting that in this vehicle, but it's a very small vehicle. It's not a lot of space, uh, and, and there is the challenge for us. So before we go into that, we have had multi beams on on these vehicles. This is the the C Raptor, where we had the the T50S. Um, but this is a this is also a system that's used for AUVs, ROVs, right? So you have your receiver, your projector, the two types of projectors, 200 and 400 kilohertz. Um, and then your subsea bottle, right? So um, that can also be used for data storage as well. Um, so we've had that on the uh, the Gavia, uh, the Gavia Sea Raptor. Uh, we've got some nice images there of a, a, a wreck of a, a plane that, that was discovered. So back to the uh, the the, uh, the the Gavia AUV, the, the smallest one. And like I said, the challenge is really to fit. Fit that into the into, into the vehicle. The, the, the outside diameter is just uh, 200 millimeters. Not a lot of space for uh, for fitting anything. Um, so there were some some considerations to take. Um, first of all, just space-wise, right? Um, there's there's not a lot of a lot of space to fit it in. We got to consider there's a there's a vehicle bus that that uh, takes care of all the communications throughout the modules. So we have we have to consider that as well. We've got to think about um, uh, airflow, uh, heat, heat transfer, uh, buoyancy. Um, but we have um, we have this processor here that we use for the uh, USB system. It's a very small processor, um, so we use the electronics to fit that in the hull. Right. So this is this is proven technology. Right. Um, the new thing here is to put it in a different package. So in terms of the wet ends, the wet ends are the same. So projector, receiver, this is our, our, our standard wet ends for uh, our T20 systems. There's no modification on that end. The wet ends are titanium housing, the, 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 the body of the vehicle is aluminum, so we put some uh, isolation in between. Um, the, way they are, the, the way they are fitted, you could also take the wet ends off without having to open the module as well. And as you can see, we also put some some fairing around it for just for the hydrodynamic flow and also for the for the protection, of course. Um, but this is, this is an important point. This is not a, a new multi beam, right? It's an existing multi beam. The weapons are just um, um, not not customized in any way. Okay. There also is two terabyte SSD for for data logging. Of course, um, you could use that for Paris on board. So where you log the data, it gets stored on the, on the SSD. Keras on board is running there, waiting for every new file to finish, and then it uh, it, uh, it processes that in nearly real time. Um, we have some interesting settings in this system also when it comes to um, powering on and powering off. So when the system get, would get be powered on, it would automatically start pinging 
um, and we'd already start recording and if we we'd power off and then come back to life, it would just remember its last settings and then and then continue on, right? So if you imagine you have certain range settings, and for whatever reason you lose the power, here it comes back on, it, it goes with the same range settings, so you're, you're tracking the seabed immediately again. So this is an example of what, what it would look like, right? Our, our AUV, so there's a, for example, here's a camera in the front, then there's a battery module, and then here is our, our T20. And as you can see, you know, the receiver, it's about 25 centimeters wide, right? right? But it still, it still fits in the vehicle quite nicely. Um, it, and we have some you know, fairing around it to ensure we get good flow. Um, then we have, what do we have else? We got a DBL in there, and we got some strobes there, possibly another, another battery system. Yeah. So with this type of configuration, and then we have a system that's about, about three meters, a bit more than three meters long. This type of configuration we expect will get about 10 hours, uh, or two batteries will get 10 hours at roughly three knots, so to speak. So I already mentioned the adaptive gates, or sorry, the, uh, the automated controls, and there's some that are uh, really useful if you think about working in, a, um, in an autonomous fashion. Uh, of course, we don't have a surveyor uh, that can communicate to the sonar, um, and, and you really w you can't babysit the sonar, so you really want it to run it by itself. So we have this thing we call that tracker, and it's like an, an autopilot, right? And what it does is have, you have all these settings like power, absorption, spreading, range, right, that you would otherwise have to set in the mission before you launch the, the AUV. We can, we can have that now to just run the tracker. So what I'm going to show you now is it's just a, a short video clip um, this is the sonar wedge. If you've never seen the sonar wedge, you have to imagine this. You've got your sonar there, and we are sailing into the screen, and normally you would see your seabed coming across. Um, initially, you'll see lots of noise because the settings aren't proper. Um, you'll see the user go to this tracker button, hit that, and then it kicks in. Now in, in an AUV scenario, you wouldn't have a user doing that, but you can send the command or, or plan it such that it is in tracker mode. Right? And then Tracker is like, like, like I said, the autopilot, and Tracker is in control and, 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 and runs the survey for you in that sense. So there we go. See, Tracker's turned on, lots of noise. See that it's there, right? And then you see that ringing starts to decrease immediately, so it finds the right gain values. Um, the altitude of the AUV would change, right? It would change the, uh, the range value as well. So you don't have to worry about fixed settings. Um, this can really work in a hands-off fashion. The next automated feature um, are adaptive gates. We often talk about um, things like noise, right? Nobody wants to collect lots of data and then find themselves being picking out the bad the bad stuff, right? Um, and really, you know, the multi-beam itself is, is very clean, the receiver is, is, is very clean, the bottom detection is very solid. You can still have situations where you find noise, you might have fish, fish being attracted, or for example by the strobes, right? You could have um, lots, of, lots of sediment in the water as well. Those are reasons why you could have noise and you, you don't want to finish your survey and, and realize that, that you need to do a rerun. So we think with adaptive gates, it would be quite useful. Um, and with the adaptive gates, what these are is so these yellow lines, and they basically tell the bottom detection, it says, this is where we found the seabed last time, go look for it here. Right. Um, so I'll show you an example here. This is an example where we're going past the key wall, not a typical scenario with an AUV, but a, I, I, I want to show you that because it gives you an idea of the, kind of the, the flexibility of the power of the, the adaptive gates. Um, it's easy enough on a, on a flat sea bed, of course, but here we have a man-made structure and, and, it, and it still is able to follow it. So there you go. So you see some objects. We're not losing any data, right? It's following the seabed. It follows that key wall that goes up. And as the key wall is moving away, it, it still keeps following it, so there's, there's no risk of losing any data. 
So these two features, Tracker Adaptive Gates, they are um, standard features with the, T, with the, with the T20 and, and, and all RT series, in fact. And we think they're perfectly suited for uncrewed autonomous surveys. So, excellent. so we have low logistics AUV with a multi V, but we think that opens up opportunities in the likes of uh, subsea engineering surveys, debris surveys, uh, geohazard surveys. Uh, also thinking about pipeline surveys, relays, as laid, um, and, uh, and trenching surveys. Uh, possibly some also in renewables, we see a lot of activity there, so we think that could be a, a very useful feature. And the renewables, of course, you're working in around, you know, 40, 50 meters of water, and you can come really shallow as well. AMV, you have that op opportunity. Um, and of course, you know, applying from a small vessel, a small vessel from a beach, or maybe from a, a larger USV are all options there. Right, that's me, guys. Um, thanks. Thanks for your attention. Teledyne Marine. Everywhere you look.